What's up guys, Parker Talks is back. Spider-Man is one of the most iconic figures in the Marvel Climatic Universe. And not only that, but also other Marvel movies as well, as there's been three different Spider-Man actors. Now, they had to face a lot of villains in those live-action movies. So let's rank the 11 villains from the live-action Spider-Man movies. Let's go. So coming in at number 11, we have the Rhino, which basically, I mean, he's not really a villain, a major villain in these films, as he's only in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, and at first he's a bank robber, and then the only other time you see him is at the very end of the film, which, I mean, it's a cool sequence, which just signifies that uh, Spider-Man, Peter Parker, is going to continue fighting crime, but he's just in a Rhino suit yelling, I am the Rhino, like, I mean, it's just, it's just kind of dumb, but, uh, and... Other than that, we don't know anything else about him, so that's why he's dead last. I mean, <laughs> there, he's just the rhino. We don't know anything else about him. Coming in at number 10, we have another villain from The Amazing Spider-Man 2. It's Electro, who's played by Jamie Foxx, and I just really don't like uh, Jamie Foxx's uh, character that he is before Electro. He's like this nerdy guy, and then after this freak accident, he becomes Electro, which, first off, the CGI for Electro is not the greatest. Uh, I don't... I don't know. I don't really like it, but also just after his accident where he gets in a tank with electric eels, after that he becomes Electro and says he wants to live in a world without Spider-Man. I don't, I don't know. There's just really like no motivation, at least for me watching the movie, on why he wants to defeat Spider-Man. Uh, there's some cool sequences when he fights Spider-Man and there's some slow-mo actions, um, but overall, just the character of Electro isn't that amusing to me, so that's why it's only in at number 10. At number 9, we have the Sandman from Spider-Man 3, and this guy is so complex, it's really hard for me to know where to rank this guy. I mean, he has some cool sequences where he can transform, uh, and just into different uh, beings, basically, as the Sandman, but I just, I didn't like the part where he was created as the Sandman and how it kind of ties in with the story of Peter Parker's dad dying. Um, it's, it's just like as if they wanted to put that in and just didn't feel necessary for them to put that in. I mean, Spider-Man 3 had so many villains that it just was too many uh, for this movie to be a good film, I believe. Uh, and I f feel like the Sandman was one of the reasons why um, maybe this film wasn't as good as it should be. I mean, I like the character, but as a Sandman, just not one of my favorite villains. At number 8, we have Venom from Spider-Man 3. No, not the Venom that Tom Hardy played, but this is a totally different Venom that is in Spider-Man 3 that, again, like I said, has so many villains that it just doesn't make the film as good as the other two uh, original Spider-Man movies. And this uh, Venom, the character that plays Eddie Brock, is, I don't think, at the right character for Eddie Brock compared to how Tom Hardy plays him. And also when he becomes Venom, Venom talks exactly the same as the character Eddie Brock does, which I feel like sets that off a little bit. Uh, plus just this guy of how nerdy he is maybe doesn't fit well when he becomes Venom. You just feel like Venom is this nerdy Venom. I don't know. Uh, and also, you don't really see the actual Venom part until later in the film, so that really sets it off for me as well. Uh, a lot of stuff that I just didn't like, especially when you compare it to the Venom film, so that's why it's only in at number 8. The Green Goblin from The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is at number 7 for me, and I'm really comparing this. Uh, this is Harry Osborn, um, who is Spider-Man's best friend, and I'm comparing this to the original Spider-Man and that Harry Osborn. I really like that Harry Osborn better in the original one than the uh, than the second Amazing Spider-Man um, movies. Um, yeah, I don't know. Also, he changes it to like a literal goblin, which I don't think they should have done that. Um, I, again, I'm just comparing both Harry Osborns, and I believe this is the weaker Harry Osborn. I do really like the uh, the scene, the like end fight scene between him and uh, Spider-Man and that whole sequence uh, was definitely the best part of that film for The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Uh, just of all the Green Goblins, I feel like this is the weakest. At number six, we have the new Goblin who is mostly in Spider-Man 3, but he's been Harry Osborn for the uh, whole Spider-Man original trilogy. And again, like I said before, this is my... Uh, 
favorite, Harry Osborne as James Franco. James Franco, excuse me, plays this role. Um, there's just a lot of tension between him and Peter Parker throughout the movies. So I'm really looking more towards that than when he becomes a new goblin in Spider-Man 3 and then eventually turns sides and uh, wants to side with Spider-Man. Um, he's not a like a real villain, but there is a lot of tension between him and Peter Parker throughout this movie, throughout the movies, which are really good, and uh, that's why it's that's why it's basically in the middle. He's not like a true villain, but he is a really good character in these uh, movies. And again, I just I just like this character a lot better than the other uh, Green Goblin. And number five, I have the Lizard from The Amazing Spider-Man, and I feel like I, I really like this uh, villain. There's nothing like too big about him, nothing too bad about him, uh, just basically pretty much in the middle. That's why it's more in the middle on my rankings. It's just this guy that, I mean, is friends with Peter Parker or knows Peter Parker, and with just in scientist experiments, uh, just kind of goes mad and basically turns on Peter Parker and basically becomes a lizard. Uh, yes, he becomes a lizard, but... Uh, I feel like this is one of my uh, one of the better villains in the Spider-Man movies because there's nothing like too bad about him. Uh, again, like I said, nothing spectacular, but I mean, you get a lot of cool fight scenes with him and Spider-Man, and yeah, I mean, the Lizard is a very solid villain for Spider-Man. And number four, we have the OG villain from the Spider-Man movies, the Green Goblin, played by William Defoe. Yes, maybe the CGI with him flying on his little uh, hoverboard thing is not the best because uh, it is the first movie, and this is in the early 2000s. But this is one of the like best, like first real live action superhero movies. So he's one of the first live action villains at, in a superhero movie as well. And I look more towards forget all the bad CGI or maybe like the bad costume that looks like a Power Ranger by some people. Uh, just the character himself uh, as Mr. Osborn plays a big role even throughout the movies, even after his final battle with Spider-Man, as he is a big role to Harry Osborn and to Peter Parker. Uh, and just like his whole movie in that original Spider-Man film, he, I mean, William Defoe is a great actor and uh, he just has an incredible performance in that first movie, so that's why he's a solid number four. And number three, we have Mysterio from Spider-Man Far From Home, and I really like Jake Gyllenhaal as an actor and also in this role as Mysterio. Uh, Mysterio has some cool features as he claims to be from some other uh, universe or, or multiverse trying to defeat these elementals and trying to trick Spider-Man, basically, into taking over what Tony Stark has built already. And, I mean, I, I do like this concept. The one thing that goes down from it is that once you realize that all of these elementals and everything is fake, uh, that last fight scene with the elementals in Spider-Man isn't uh, the highest stakes that it could have been if you still didn't know that these elementals were fake. Uh, although, there, I mean, there's some really cool parts with Mysterio as he's tricking Spider-Man into with all these drones, and there's some cool uh, scenes where he's tricking him into, like, there's a wall there, but there's really not, stuff like that. Um, and also, just the character itself, uh, I believe, does a good job uh, in this role in the MCU, uh, I'm just glad he's not a superhero and a villain. So, but instead he's a villain. So, uh, Mysterio is at number three. And number two, we have Dr. Octopus from Spider-Man 2. And I believe between number two and number one, it was very close. Uh, I feel like th this brings the best fight sequences between a villain and Spider-Man as you just have incredible sequences with a bank robbery, with the train scene. There's a lot of stuff from there. And also the, the character itself as Dr. Octopus plays a great connection with Spider-Man as you believe he's on his side, but what he does drives him to madness, basically, and Spider-Man eventually has to try to defeat him. Um, I mean, just like this whole, I, I feel like this movie might be number one for these Spider-Man movies, honestly, and Dr. Octopus brings a big role into why that could be number one. Um, I mean, like I said, number two and number one's really close, um, but right now, I'm going to put Dr. Octopus at number two. 
But at number one, we have Spider-Man himself when he becomes the Venom Spider-Man. I'm just kidding, not from Spider-Man 3. Actually, at number one, we have the Vulture from Spider-Man Homecoming. And Michael Keaton is in this role. And when Michael Keaton is in a role, I mean, he's an incredible actor as well. You know it's going to be a good role. Uh, the Vulture, I want to quote this actually from a website uh, called Vulture.com. It says, the best villains don't think of themselves as the, as the villains. And Keaton brought this truism to life. You don't even see him as a super big villain in this film. But yet, when this movie keeps going along, it just gets bigger and bigger. And he's not a guy uh, that I, I want to say what Sean Chandler usually says. Uh, he's another YouTuber that I watch. Um, compared to Thanos, he wants to destroy the world. He wants to destroy everything. Vulture just wants to protect his family, do what he believes is right for him, and nothing too large scale. Um, but to Peter Parker, he still has to defeat him, and that just brings a great... Uh, great uh, connection in this film between the two and also one of the biggest turnarounds for any event in any of the MCU movies is probably in this one where uh, you realize that he is actually the father of the daughter that Spider-Man is taking on a homecoming date which I feel like uh, speaks volume to what someone else uh, and just the whole world could experience through that whole thing of just how much pressure there is. And so I feel like they do a great job with that. And just how Michael Keaton is and just like how calm and composed he is while the vul while he is the vulture uh, when he talks to Spider-Man just brings it all the way up there to number one. So Vulture is my favorite villain from the Spider-Man movies. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. What is your favorite villain from the Spider-Man movies? And I would love to know. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.